Serenity Now. <laughs> Chris Porco got Just a judge. I, it really did. Chris Porco got a judge to stop the Lifetime movie from airing this weekend. And I was really looking forward to it. We're joined by WGY legal analyst Chaz Farcher of Martin Harding and Mazzotti. Good morning, Chaz. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Chuck. Hey, Chaz. I'm really irritated because a guy who killed his father and tried to kill his mother has any say in the matter whatsoever. One of the best lawyers in the world come right out of the jail house. <laughs> So what are they? How were they able to get this temporary injunction? Now, what what are they uh, alleging? Yeah, you know, it's a really odd situation. What Porco is uh, alleging is a violation of the civil rights law, and essentially, it's uh, the theft of his person or his likeness. You know, for instance, if uh, Chuck or Kelly, somebody were to take a picture of you guys and then use it without your permission to sell, I don't know, old spice deodorant, <laughs> or listerine, or something like that. Yeah. You know, that that that's really the purpose of the law, but. He's managed to use it in this situation to get the Supreme Court to hand down an injunction uh, preventing Kelly from enjoying a a nice glass of wine in the Lifetime (laughs) movie about Christopher Porco. Well, Um, let me ask you this. If he were – if he hadn't committed a crime, I could see where maybe that could be the case. But do you lose some sort of rights to that when it's a public case like that? It's out in the well, news. I mean, if I yeah. if I did something wrong and it was all over the news and my mugshot was out there and video of me walking into court was out there, I kind of lose any say in the matter. Yeah, you're right. You know, and listen, there's two, there's two, two parts to this. Uh, you know, first of all, there's an exception to the civil rights law for anything that's newsworthy, and Christopher Porco's murder trial certainly received significant coverage, uh, and there's an exception for this type of situation. You know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's not being used for trade or for advertisement. It's actually being used as a documentary or, or uh, to report on the news. So you're right, there's an exception. I, I'm not quite sure how he managed to get this restraining order. Mm-hmm. What he did was he alleged that the entire account uh, of the story that they've intended to tell is fictionalized, which, you know, in order to get a restraining order based upon that, you've got to show essentially that there's no attachment to reality. The whole thing is false and fictionalized. And Apparently, Mr. Porco's never even seen the movie yet, so I don't know how he can make that allegation. So how do people get away with writing an unauthorized biography? It's the same kind of thing. You're one's television, one's a book. Well, and it depends. And again, the situation is, is it a newsworthy or a public figure in the case of Christopher Porco? I think, obviously, you are. You know, so there's a a very very large exception uh, when it comes to the First Amendment. The courts are very reluctant to put any type of restraint on the the press or or freedom of speech. Speech. And in order to do so, you've got to really show that it's going to harm the public in some way, shape, or form, or that the biography or the story that you're selling is a complete false fictionalization of that person's life and could do damage to them in that way. Um, you know, in this situation, I think, like I said, Christopher Porco is certainly somebody that's newsworthy and certainly somebody that's been covered by the media significantly. So really what they're doing is reporting and telling his story. So, so is my, he... my guess is that... Uh, Lifetime will manage to get the PRO tossed at some point down the road. They may, and unfortunately, it may delay whenever this movie is supposed to take place. But. Well, that's what I was just going to ask you. Uh, I, I would assume, I mean, just not on any legal basis, just on a gut feeling, that Lifetime will be able to win this thing and uh, air this movie. I'm wondering, though, if it would have, is it too soon to expect it to be done in time for this film to uh, remain uh, uh, airing on its original schedule on of Saturday night? Well, you know, it's up to the appellate division when they can hear this uh, request for an, uh, an emergency order lifting the restraining the restraining order. But uh, yeah, the appellate division has a way of kind of prioritizing these. And I think if you look at this situation, certainly Lifetime uh, stands to lose significant amounts of money. I'm sure they've been promoting the movie. It's got a specific air date. They've got not only they're not allowed to, to show the movie at this point, but they also can't promote or advertise it either. So, you know, I'm sure it's... Uh, played havoc with their their airtime schedule and everything else so it's up to the appellate division when they'll hear the motion to lift the tro but my guess is they'll try and do it sooner rather than later but it all depends upon the the judges at the appellate division over there hey Chaz, can you hang on through the break we wanted to get to this other case do you have a couple more minutes yeah, absolutely. Okay, thanks. I hate to spring that for you on the air. What's he going to say? No, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking with Chaz Farcher uh, from Martin Harding Mazzotti. I'm going to talk after the the break about this a photo of the kid holding the gun and that triggered a big uh, CPS uh, invasion. So that's upcoming. 